Everett Schmeck Insurance tonight's sponsor of the Ottawa Glandorf Girls Basketball State Semifinal. We are here at the Schottenstein Center, OGA third straight trip to state, first in Division Three, and then back to back in Division Two, trying to take down Kettering Alter, a team that beat him in the title game last year. First quarter action, Titans get out to a good start, give and go on the inbounds to Lexi Schrader. Just like that, it's two to nothing. Then a transition, Kylie White to Katie Hempfling, 4 0 OG. Schrader keeps it going, bounce pass to Hempfling, 6 to 3 lead for the Titans. But down by four before the end of the quarter, White finds Hempfling, Alter leading 10 to 8 after a quarter. In the second, Hempfling kick out to Aaron Kaufman. Three pointer is good, it's 11 to 10. Ottawa Glandorf, the back and forth continues, down one. White gets her own miss, it's 13 12 OG. Once again, they find themselves down one. Hempfling the baseline drive kick to Kaufman for her second three of the half it's 16 to 14 and then Hempfling before the break the drive Titans leading at the break 19 to 17 third quarter high low action Hempfling to White it's 21 20 Ottawa Glandorf but Alter goes on a run leading by 10 Hempfling the drive but Alter in control into the fourth. OG trying to come back late in this one. Kaufman jumper makes it 37 33 nights. White then gets it to Schrader. Under four minutes to play. OG within three. Once again, down five. White finds Hemfling. It's 41 38. Alter, 209 left in the contest. Kaufman then to Schrader, ties it with under a minute to play. We're headed to overtime. In that extra session, Lexi Schrader to Ashley Schrader. Ottawa Glandorf leads 43-41, but that would be their last bucket as Alter ends the game on a 9-0 run and wins it 50-43, despite 15 points by the junior Katie Hemfling and 12 by Lexi Schrader. Yeah, I was very proud of our girls, especially in the third quarter. They came out of gang like gangbusters after that halftime break. And, um, you know, we made some mental mistakes and could have easily folded. This was a team that ran away from us last year, as many of you are well aware. Um, I think we dropped down 10 or 12 points. And the girls responded. I think, what, down 12, just a couple of seconds left in the third quarter to respond, to push it into overtime. You know, I'm not going to take anything away from Walter. That's a heck of a team, and we did everything we could to keep Braxton and Libby from scoring. But you know, our girls gave everything they had. On, they left everything on the floor to just get back to that overtime um, and push it to overtime. Um, you know, you, you look at uh, their percentages and 50% from the field, 60% from three point. And, 72.7 from the free throw line. You're not going to beat too many teams that shoot the ball that well, even when you're playing great defense. And I thought that first half we had a remarkable defensive effort. Um, but, you know, when, when, it, when we got up against it or they got up against it, they went to Libby and Braxton and they responded. Questions? Troy, what did they do different in the third quarter? Kind of they put more pressure on you? Uh, I think they, it, they elevated the pressure. I think, uh, you know, uh, we made some mental mistakes and, and they capitalized on it before we could recover. They, they, it's kind of like they did last year when, when Katie got hurt and then Kylie fouled out before we could really think about what, what was happening next. They're a, they're a well-coached team, very disciplined, and they kind of swim like sharks in the sea. And as soon as they smell blood, they went after us. And I felt that was kind of the difference again in the third quarter. Um, I guess the difference here being is that in the fourth quarter we recovered and you know pushed it and, and, and were able to recover as opposed to last year, you know, not having our five on the floor, we didn't have that option. Lexi, just talk about the defensive effort on Braxton, obviously, and uh, having their energy to hit some huge threes in the uh, fourth quarter to help get OG back in the game. Yeah, I don't really know where that energy came from, but I just <laughs> kind of, I was open, so I shot it and then hoped it went in and it went in. But, um, yeah, the, the goal was to, you know, put pressure on Braxton and, uh, I don't know, keep her from scoring. But, you know, she's going to get her points, and I knew that. But um, I feel like I felt like I gave it, it all on my defense, and, but, you know, it just happens. Yeah, I, I, I just piggyback a little bit on the question for Lex. I thought she did a great job on Braxton early. I really did. You know, it, we don't have that run out in the third quarter where they take a big lead. I think you see a different result because the defense was grinding on, on her as well. 
um, we weren't able to really hold the ball and you know we had to play fast and, and try to stay with them if we could have ground out a little more on defense on their defense so that I mean we're I don't know how many minutes they had the ball on offense versus us but I venture to say that they were holding the ball a heck of a lot longer than we were so for for Lexi to have to play defense that length and then later Katie you know it's a testament that they were able to stand in the overtime because we didn't sub much if at all Coach, you won the turnover battle 18 to 16, but a couple of those turnovers seem to come at inopportune times for you. Did, did, did Kettering do something defensively? Well, I, I think they ratcheted up a little when we were tired. Like I said, kind of sharks in the water. They could they could see that we were we were dragging. We made a lot of mental mistakes. Uh, I think we had three turnovers under their bucket, just bringing the ball in bounds. It all capitalized for six points. You look at the score. You know, we get the ball to half court on those possessions and we were able to play defense underneath them and it's a different result. But when you're tired and, and the girls make a mental mistake, you don't, you can't punish them. I mean, they were given everything they had, but you know, we did have a couple of those that were inopportune turnovers that resulted in easy buckets for them. And we didn't really get that, you know, um, normally we get a couple fast break uh, buckets. We didn't really get any of those. They did a great job of taking away our ability to run the floor. Uh, I think they had eight points to our four in a fast break. So, we, we were playing against a very well-disciplined team on offense and defense, and we weren't getting what we normally get because of that. So it made it an uphill challenge the whole way. I thought our girls responded well to be there. <coughs> Unfortunately, we weren't there at the end. First time we were in a while, too, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know when the last time we went in. I mean, we had a lot of close games, but it, it, it wasn't the overtime, I don't think. It was, the, it was not having the legs. I mean... <laughs> I, I thought Lexi was going to go into a coma when we were in, in between. She just looked up like, I can't breathe. And, uh, you know, uh, I wish I could say we could rotate somebody, but she was doing a, as good a job as we could get. And, you know, you, you want to, you know, the idea was stay upright and get as much oxygen in your lungs, get some water because we got another couple minutes to play. But, you know, I, I think Libby and, and Braxton were what 80 percent from the free throw lines. When the when the game's on the line and you can put the ball in their hands, it doesn't really matter how well you're playing. You, know, you can't take it from them. Hey, how how shot looked good where you were, or wasn't there time to think about that? Who shot? The half court shot. No. I, it looked good from my perspective. Maybe it was a little flat. If it's got a little more air. It, it didn't look good, but a lot of our shots didn't look good. We just didn't have our legs underneath us. You, you know, we had some that rimmed in and rimmed out. And, you know, those were more, let's hope they go in. You didn't, from the moment they were launched, I, had, I just remember Aaron taking a shot. And I was like, I hope it goes in. But it didn't look like it when she, you know, when she shot it. It just didn't look like she had the comfort level to just shoot with ease. And unfortunately, that was just due to the, us being tired. Katie, how about their athleticism and their quickness? It just seemed like you had to run your set over and over and over to try to get a good shot. Yeah, um, well, they're so lengthy on defense, and they really see where we pass the ball. And that's normally open, but then they're there. So we always had to use ball fakes or back doors. And um, they got a few key turnovers off of that, which I think they put into buckets, which really hurt us a lot in, like, the third quarter. So I think um, – yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> but I, I think what you saw, if you go back and watch, at least we saw, 21 was really playing off. Uh, we, we thought Libby was really playing off and jamming up the middle, taking Kylie away, and taking a lot of our ability, it, which allowed the other defenders to get up in the passing lane. You know, other teams would have a 5'8", five, 5'9", five, girl that they could run to the block. Our girl was Ashley uh, Schrader, a 5'3", girl, and she didn't, you know, we weren't able, when she did get the ball down in there, she just wasn't able to take advantage. So. You know, again, it's just a, a matchup that we weren't able to capitalize on. But, but um, you know, we saw what they were trying to do. It was just difficult to try and maneuver around it. Uh, we, we tried different sets, um, but they just kept pushing out in the passing lane. Okay, what was the message after like, heading into the fourth down set? I mean, just kind of talk about that a little bit and the mindset as you answered the fourth. Uh, really, we have a saying it's called a frog, and it's fully rely on God. And so I think that's what really got us going. And then what Mr. Yant, his pregame talk was redemption. And we had that in the back of our minds because we really wanted it this year. And we just fell a little short, but that's OK. I wouldn't want to fall short with any other team. What do you make of you guys battling back from a 12-point deficit and forcing that overtime? Because that's 
to overcome that kind of hurdle, I mean, that in itself is kind of like a moral victory, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah, that, that really shows the resilience we have in our team, what Coach said when he came into the locker room. I couldn't be any prouder coming back fourth quarter. We could have easily folded like last year, but I'm glad I was actually able to play the full game this year. <laughs> but um, we just fell a little short, but that's okay. Coach Shan, two seniors, uh, Kylie and Lexi, I don't know if Devin didn't play, but she's been a pivotal piece. But Won a lot of games. I know they've come close, but they won a lot of games and had a lot of positives throughout their career too. Oh, definitely. They go down as you know the greatest four-year time we've had at OG. So, you know, we're, it's going to be impossible to replace them. That's why you you take it all in when you're here, because you know, unlike these little kids that were up at the send-off, I think we do this every year because they've you know they're eight years old and we've been doing it ever since they can remember. But you know. I, I, it's a true testament to the to the senior leadership that we've been down here three years, and, and you know we, we weren't carried by just one player for three years or two players for three years. You know every girl had to step up. You know we had Liz and them a couple years ago, then Danny last year, and now Lexi and Kylie really took the mantle, and hopefully, you know we'll, we'll, we'll continue that. And but I think they built something. They built something that the younger girls can rely on and, and call home, call tradition, call legacy, call it whatever you want. But the program now has a movement. And I think they were extremely instrumental in that. Lexi, can I direct that to you? I know it's tough always your final game at this stage, so close, but reflecting on back four years, a lot of positives in that spin. Yeah, um, I couldn't ask for a better senior year. Um, I don't know. The, honestly, the past four years have been great. Um, I'm very blessed and thankful for everyone who has helped me, like all my teammates and the coaches. Um, I wouldn't trade them for anything. So. Coach Putnam County this year, unbelievable basketball. For, I think it's the first time ever two teams from the same county are in Columbus. What do you make of just the success, not just of what you guys have been able to do, but also on the Audible office and play, playing later tonight? I mean, that's this is some unbelievable well, stuff we're seeing. Well, first off, I wish the, be I wish the best for Audible. I'd love to stick around and watch them play Saturday. You know, our girls play against them all summer. We have open gyms, uh, countywide open gyms we go to. Uh, we're involved in, you know, we know the coaching staffs well. I, I coach with John Turbin, so, you know, uh, we really we really get along well when we're not competing. But as you guys saw in, you know, this season, our competitions have been great. Um, I, I don't know what you make of it. I mean, it, it, it's great basketball. It's great fun. I, I think it challenges us and makes us better, and hopefully we made them better. Um, and I just, I, I hope they have great success. I mean, they deserve it. Thanks once again to Everett Schmink Insurance. Tough way to end the season, but a good one, a historic one by Otto Glandorf as they fall 50 to 43.